from a town where most of the people are so close minded They go into school and they work in a job but they don't even like it I won't be put in a box, nobody telling me what I should rock Nobody telling me what I should drop cause I do what I want and just nobody don't stop Hey guys, welcome to the wrestling show That was one good Danish. You're damn right you get it for me this time. The last time I wanted it so bad, you didn't get it for me. Which one was this again? Oh, good old cherry. I love it. Thank you, man. Next time I want something different. All right. I think I'll save this for later. <laughs> That better have been a good Danish. Or I was kind of messy, but I'll forgive you for that part. Yeah, we noticed. To be V-Man! You've got to be V-Man! Woo! AJ Styles! You will rest in peace. I was just so far from here. Welcome to uh, episode 7, and in today's episode we're going to do a review of Wrestlemania 34. And this Wrestlemania took place in New Orleans, and uh, my friend Nitin and I, uh, he's joining us back again. We went to go see Wrestlemania at the theater, had a great time watching it, but we're going to break it down for you. We're going to get into our favorite matches moments and also the moments in Wrestlemania that we didn't like and the matches that we thought were really lackluster. After that we'll get into an overall what we thought about Wrestlemania and including the Raw after Wrestlemania including Smackdown. All right let's get into it. So uh, Wrestlemania, New Orleans, uh, what did you think of the opening match? The Intercontinental title match, we have The Miz, Rollins, and uh, Finn Balor. Oh, I thought the match was uh, fantastic from start to go. All three competitors showed that they wanted to go, and they wanted the Intercontinental title. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was great to see The Miz and how he wanted to strategize, try to use Rollins and Balor to take out the other. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, I thought it was a really good opening match. The one thing that I really liked was that, first of all, the Intercontinental title was being defended at WrestleMania. That's that's always a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, but I really liked the chemistry between those three wrestlers. Uh, for me, uh, my pick was actually The Miz to retain the title. Yeah. Uh, because I feel that whether it's his character or not on screen... I think that The Miz has really invested a lot in that title and at least trying to make it worthy on TV, especially since uh, a little guy named Brock doesn't really show up. So uh, he really isn't around to represent the Universal title. So there has to be a main title uh, that's you know at the top. And I think Miz has done a great job at making that title... Um, be the most worthy on Raw, at least. That's true. Anytime the Miz holds the Intercontinental title, it means something. Everybody else could care less, but, yeah, you know. After the Intercontinental title match, we got into the SmackDown Women's title match, which was Charlotte Flair versus... Uh, it was Asuka. Asuka. Yeah. Versus Asuka. So I thought that the Charlotte Flair versus Asuka match was actually better than the Intercontinental title match. I agree. The match itself was fantastic. I mean, the hype was there, you know, Queen versus Empress, title versus Streak. It just had that finesse of Goldberg versus Kevin Nash all over again, except except no stun guns or anything like that. Just straight up, straight up wrestling match. Straight up pro wrestling, that's the way I like it. Yeah, um, 
Well, I would say that that match was better than Goldberg and Kevin Nash. Oh, uh, yeah, they mean, no stun gun, but all right. But uh, I thought that that match had, first of all, the crowd was invested in the match. You know, they were, uh, they were on their edge of their seats, at least I was. And I thought that the flow of the match was really good. We wondered, well, is Asuka's streak going to get broken at WrestleMania? You know, because she hadn't lost. And going into this match, I think a lot of people were assuming she was going to win the title. Exactly, yeah. Right? Um, and I think it was a surprise when Charlotte won. That's true. I mean, the... I thought Oscar was going to win the SmackDown Women's Championship, and I was pondering to myself, how's a how's a Raw superstar going to hold the SmackDown Women's Championship? But they twist they twisted they twisted it around so that Charlotte would win the match, which makes sense because if Oscar streak is going to end, it's going to be on a big big pay per view. You don't want Oscar's streak to end based on like Monday Night Raw or you know some B B level pay per view. You want it at the big pay per view. And WrestleMania just made sense to end the streak. Did it have to be now? Don't know, but it was still a good match. Next, we have the United States Championship, which we saw uh, Ginger Mahal versus Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode and Rusev. Uh, what did you think of this match? Um, this match, to me, was average. I mean, it was, it was okay. It wasn't really spectacular. Usually with the multi-man match, it's usually this big epic thing but with this one it was just just a really stalemate match basically yeah yeah you know I thought it was about average too I mean wasn't really a match I was sitting on the edge of my seat you know no. uh, I will say though that it's really cool to see Bobby Roode at I think this is his first WrestleMania right yeah this was his first one so it was cool to see him at his first WrestleMania. Uh, the crowd was really into Rusev. Uh, but other than that, uh, I thought the match was pretty average. I will say that I really liked the fact that Jinder Mahal won the match. Uh, I'm a big fan of Jinder Mahal, and I'm just a big fan of, of young talent uh, winning championships and being in the main event and... And yeah, so what did you think about him winning? It was, um, it was okay, you know. It wasn't really what I want. It's not really what I wanted. I was gonna, I was hoping Bobby Roode would win it back or something like that. But you know, I'm nothing against Jinder. Jinder is a great talent. He's good. I'm gl I was glad he won the WWE title last year. The United States Championship was just another, another thing to put on his resume. I mean, that's about it. And, yeah, it was all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted Bobby Roode to win as well. Uh, but I'm happy with Ginger uh, winning the match. So yeah, that's, that's a fair point. So the next match we had was uh, Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Uh -huh. Now, this match... Uh, Totally took me by surprise. I yeah. didn't think that it was going to be uh, this good. I thought it was just going to be a joke. Uh, but I uh, I really liked it. I liked uh, Ronda Rousey in it. And I was, to be honest, I wasn't really sure what to expect from her Nobody in this. Did. Nobody did. Um, Kurt Angle, I thought, was pretty good in it. I mean, I think being out of the ring also... Uh, didn't help too much because I thought he was, I mean, I thought he was pretty slow in the match, but, you know, I mean, it's nice to see Kurt Angle back again, and he, he did a pretty good job for the yeah. most part. So uh, what did you think? I thought the match um, blew my expectations. I thought it was just going to be a simple match, like a, celeb a celebrity-type match, but, you know, Ronda Rousey proved that she can do anything if she steps in the ring. She can pro She's proved she can do it. I was impressed with Stephanie as well. So, I mean, she carried herself in the match really well. She was doing well as well. I mean, Kurt and Triple H, I mean, they did well. I mean, Triple H I put at the bottom, but that's because of my biasness against him. But, you know, Ronda Rousey was the top top star in that match. 
and she really blew everybody in the storm and the crowd was just into that match and made the match so exciting. I mean the part where Ronda Rousey you know takes Triple H up on her sh on her shoulders that was that was shocking so it was good. Yeah uh, what did you think about that like what did you think about Ronda Rousey fighting Triple H? I was, um, it was pretty it was pretty cool to see you know obviously you know everybody's pushing for intergender wrestling in the big television stage I mean it'll never happen but that's as close as you're gonna get. Um, it's not like Triple H actually attacked her or anything like that. I mean, we got Kurt Angle putting Stephanie in the ankle lock. That's about it. But you know, Rousey lifting up Triple H—that's yeah, that's something that you thought would be impossible to see. But you know, you got a chance to see it now. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, it's part of the show, but. Uh... What did you think of uh, the ref uh, not disqualifying when well when Ronda Rousey and Triple H fight each other, and then Kurt Angle did the ankle walk to Stephanie, and, and the ref after that is like, oh no no can't do that, yeah you know, but there was no disqualification. Uh, that's uh, that's weird. I mean, obviously if you go by video game rules, if you uh, if you attack if a man attacks a woman, even if they're the manager, you get disqualified just like that where on the opposite side of a woman attacks a man, nothing happens. But, you know, like, I don't know what the rules are in that case, whether you get disqualified for it or not. I mean, there's been instances in previous WrestleManias where, you know, Triple H accidentally speared Stephanie through a table. You would think he'd get disqualified. You know, Roman Reigns speared Stephanie the year before that. You'd think he'd get disqualified. So, you know, it's, it's complicated, obviously, like... We don't know what the rules are when it comes to that kind of stuff because I know the networks don't like it when a man hits a woman on national television, but they're all you know they're okay with a woman hitting a man. So I don't know what the uh, what the ruling is on that, and I don't think the referee knows either. And remember, it's all entertainment, not it's not it, in in WrestleMania. It's not about the sport; it's about the entertainment at this point. So. Yeah, and uh, like you said, it's entertainment. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a show. And, you know, uh, WWE makes up the rules as they go along. So yeah. that night they decided that having opposite genders fight each other was suddenly going to be legal. Yeah. And that's just the way it went. Uh, but overall, I thought it was pretty good. I think that was one of the surprises of the night anyway. Oh, yeah. For that match. And it was really cool to see Kurt Angle back again. What did you think about Kurt? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah. I'd say, I mean, he didn't do as much as people expected, but that's normal because he's been, you know, he's been wrestling for years and years and years. You know, he was away for 12 years from WrestleMania, but, you know, he's been wrestling for years, so you weren't going to get a lot. I mean, he did get that angle slam on Triple H after so many years. I mean, the last time you saw that was back in 2000. So, you know, it was great to see that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know if Kurt Angle is going to do another match like that again. He mm. may. He may. He may do some of the big, big stage matches, but, you know, with who, we don't know. Next up is the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Uh, this one we saw the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Usos versus New Day. And during this match, actually, Nitin and I were grabbing some food. And we actually missed the entire match. But we know that the Bludgeon Brothers won. And I'm not exactly sure how long this match was. It probably wasn't very long. Yeah, I think it was a quick match. Yeah. It must have been because... We left right after the Rousey match, and that was we were like at the booth for maybe like maybe five ten minutes. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, what do you think of the Bludgeon Brothers winning the match? It's um, I mean, obviously, if you're going back to their history as the Wyatt with the Wyatt family, they deserve it. But, for sure. You know, when they're repackaged as the Bludgeon Brothers, you would think you'd wait a bit longer before they'd win the tag team belt because all they've been doing so far is wrestling squash matches, basically just wrestling people for five minutes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're 
tag team champions. So, you know, obviously this new format with the Bludgeon Brothers is better than them and the Wyatt family. Because we know when they were in the Wyatt family, they'd be together and then all of a sudden they'd be beating the crap out of each other the next night. And then they're back together again. Yeah. So, hopefully they don't separate them this time when they lose the tag team titles whenever. Well, I have a feeling they probably will. Um, I'm hoping they don't. I mean, I think it's actually, uh, I think it's cool that they won the tag team championships. I would have been okay as well if the Usos retained. Uh, the New Day, I'm, yeah, we'll I'm not really into them. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want them to win anymore. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of the New Day. Maybe back when they first started, but now I just feel like they're, you know, they're kind of boring to me, but... Well, they give you pancakes, you know. You gotta gotta grab the pancakes, right? Well, if they want to give me a free supply of pancakes, then sure, I'll be their friend, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but other than that, I don't know. I just feel like they're uh, they don't do anything for me, you know. Uh, now, in terms of the Bludgeon Brothers, I think that no, I don't want them split up. I want them. I don't even want them to be split up from the Wyatt family. I mean, I think that. They can be separated from the Wyatt family, but I don't think they should rebrand them like they've done now, you know, because uh, I think they were strong as the Wyatt family, and now uh, Bray Wyatt is off doing his own thing, and, you know, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with Matt Hardy now they're back together, or now they're they're for their allies, so... yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what, what happens, and yeah, I'm glad they won the championships. Are they still the champions? Yep, they still are. They haven't uh, defended it. They will be defending it April 27th at the Greatest Royal Rumble ever, which I have no idea why they're calling it the Greatest Royal Rumble ever, because they just had a Royal Rumble like three, four months ago. Yeah, it's just to get butts and seats, I think. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia. Next up, we have... The Undertaker versus John Cena match. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if they saw that. I don't know. I hope so. Because you can't see him. Later on, during the Asuka and Charlotte match, a ref came out and whispered sweet nothings into Cena's ear. And then Cena ran off down the ramp. Everybody got really excited. Uh, and then Cena comes out. Oh, no, it was Elias, wasn't he? He came out first. Didn't Cena come out first? I don't know. I would assume, I would assume, well, we missed part of that because we were waiting in line for our food. But I assume that uh, John Cena came out first waiting for The Undertaker. And then Elias Sampson came, or sorry, Elias came out and uh, did his little guitar bit talking to Cena. And I think Elias said, oh, you know, were you expecting somebody else? And John Cena's like, yes, I was. And then Elias and John Cena had a quick fight. John Cena took him out. And then he walks up the ramp all sad and upset that he didn't get his match with The Undertaker. And all of a sudden, lights go out. And uh, basically, Undertaker's jacket and hat is in the middle of the ring. Somehow it traveled from Orlando, Florida to New Orleans by itself. And then the thunder, you know, the thunder and lightning comes out, disappears the jacket and all that. John Cena is still waiting on what's going on, and here comes The Undertaker. And as The Undertaker's doing his entrance, John Cena's shocked. And then he, somehow John Cena appears in the ring, waiting for The Undertaker. And then... They had the match, and it was about approximately, well, not approximately, but close to five minutes, I'm guessing, and the match ended with Undertaker tombstoning John Cena. So, I thought the match was all right. I mean, this is this is the way the Undertaker matches should go for a while. I mean, obviously, one year he would have this big epic match, but the next year he would have, like, a quick gimmick moment match like this with random superstars it would be great that's the way the undertaker would go i mean he could be re if he wants to stay retired or wants to be retired 
He just has to come back to WrestleMania and do these little gimmick things. It doesn't even have to be a match. It just has to be him showing up, choke slamming somebody. And it would work out for everybody, in my opinion, though. Yeah, I mean, as long as he's there and, uh, you know, he's gonna probably going to have a short match if, from now on, you know. But uh, as long as he, and I think eventually he may even not even have a match and just, like you said, show up and do a cameo or something and yeah. choke slam somebody or tombstone somebody. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the Elias thing definitely was a, you know, trick in the audience. Oh, yeah. That... You know, and uh, we thought, okay, so I guess he's going to fight Elias and then it ends up being, you know, he... Uh, does the attitude adjustment to Elias, and that's the end of that. I'm like, eh, you know, that's kind of dumb. Yeah. But then Taker actually showed up. The match, I think, was maybe less than five minutes. Maybe I'm. It's it's just a guess. It's just a guess that was close to five minutes. I mean, it could have been four. It could have been three. I don't know, but it was a short match. Yeah. So how did you feel about uh, Undertaker? Kicking Cena's ass for four minutes. I don't think it was uh, ass kicking. I think it was just. I think John Cena did most of the ass kicking, and then Undertaker did his sit up and did his boot, and that was it. So it was kind of like meh. Well, he did get his uh, move off the top rope there. For yeah, that's Taker. Right. Yeah. Did that. Uh, yeah, I mean the match was just okay. You know, it wasn't yeah. anything special. But, you know, if you look at it as a moment thing, that was pretty cool. It was more of a moment than a match. The next match we got here is Shane McMahon and your Bryan teaming up to take on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Now in this match, if Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens had beat uh, Raw, SmackDown Commissioner Shane and General Manager Daniel Bryan, they would have had their jobs back on SmackDown Live. However, if they lost to the commissioner and general manager, they would have been uh, gone from SmackDown Live. So this match, you know, it was a, uh, it was okay. It wasn't the greatest thing I've ever seen. Obviously, the one the one thing I liked about it was, um, you know, Shane and Bryan come on with their normal entrance. You know, Daniel Bryan gets the big pop because this is his first match back after retiring because he was medically cleared. And then it's uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And, uh, you know, they played their music, and you're thinking, well, how can they get music played if they're already fired? Technically, if you're fired, you don't work there, so you can't have your own entrance and time drawn. But when they came out and jumped Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan that quickly, I thought it was cool. Now, obviously, though, only, only dumb part was the fact that, you know, they did this bit where both Shane and Bryan had uh, these uh, injuries in the beginning of the match. So you had Daniel Bryan taken out so quickly, he's outside. So Shane McMahon had to do most of the work. And then later on when Daniel Bryan was okay, Shane McMahon was taken out and he's laying on the ground. So that was the only weird part of the match that I didn't like that much. But, you know, the match was fairly good and it was a match. Yeah, yeah, you know, I thought it was a really good match. Although, you know, it wasn't the best. Um... I agree that uh, Daniel Bryan being taken out in the beginning, I just thought didn't fit. I thought it was kind of weird and just cliche. Uh, but overall, it was pretty decent and it's a pretty good match. Next up, we have the Raw Women's Championship. We have uh, Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss. And this match, uh, I thought, was kind of lackluster. Uh, oh yeah, and I I really I really like the fact that Nia Jax won the championship. I I like Nia Jax. Um, I do think that she pro she may need some more work on the mic, maybe. Maybe, uh, but not by much. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that this match was terrible for was the. The storyline was kind of weird going into this. I mean, I only like the I only like the fact that they had the idea to 
do the thing where it's like, oh, the champ, the Alexa Bliss is using Nia Jax. But then when they brought up the, uh, you know, I'm a, you know, she's a big woman thing, and that kind of died out. That kind of didn't make it a championship match. That made it more like a divas match than a woman's match. Yeah. You know? I yeah. mean, the match was okay. I mean, like, like I said, Nia Jax deserves to win the championship because, you know, she's worked hard. She, I mean, she busts her ass. She's... You know, she's not the typical girl that you would see wrestling, but it makes for better opportunities for everybody. But the storyline itself was just... It just uh, felt so Divas, Divas Championship or Divas Division type storyline. Yeah, I think that's... I think that uh, WWE really messed things up with that match. Uh, but... At the end of the day, I think the fans wanted Nia Jax to win. She did. And, uh, yeah. Next up, we have the WWE Championship. AJ Styles versus Nakamura. I thought this match was pretty decent. I thought they put on a very technical match. I wouldn't say that this match was on the edge of your seat with just enthusiasm. But I think, overall, it's pretty good. And, uh... And yeah, it was just really cool to see those two actually wrestle each other, you know, especially at WrestleMania. And because uh, both of those wrestlers are just incredibly talented. Yeah. And uh, they really did put on a really good match. Uh, but it just wasn't, you know, it just wasn't a match that you were super excited about. But it was, a, it was still good, though. Uh, it was good. For, it, it was only exciting and big if you have never seen the match before. Like, I know they've had a match back in New Japan where I believe Nak I believe Nakamura beat Styles at that event and this time AJ Styles beat Nakamura in the match. I mean it was my first time seeing this match. Obviously I could have watched the Wrestle Kingdom 9 match, so I'm not going to say this was better than the other because I haven't seen the other match. But it was a good match if you've never seen it before. Obviously, you know, both guys, you know, gave it their all, gave it their best. They did their exciting moves and everything and it was great i mean was it edge of your seat maybe not but you know it was still one of the one of the best matches of the night for sure and especially for especially when you think these two guys would normally these two guys would never be world, in a world championship match at a wrestlemania so it may not have been the main event but at least those guys got to fight for a championship and put on a show at the biggest stage so that's what i like about it now, should this match have been the main event? Um, because yes, when Nakamura won the Royal Rumble, that's true. So shouldn't he have been in the main event? Yeah, but uh, I, a part of me disagrees with that because I think Oscar should have been in the main event because Oscar did win the Royal Rumble that was in the main event. Obviously, because it was the first women's Rumble, but I personally think Oscar should have been given the opportunity in the main event because. She won the Royal Rumble in the last match of the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. And yet yeah, Nakamura should have been... It should have been more closer to the main event, that's for sure. But I don't think this match should have been main event. Well, you know what? I, uh, I actually really like that take. Uh, and it would be... Well, we've never had a women's title match for us... Well, in a pay-per-view as the last match, like the main event. No. Now, I know that there's been... A women's match as a main event on Raw, I think. There has been a well, like there has been a pay per view main event for for women. That was at 2016's Raw's Hell in a Cell, which a lot of people had mixed reviews about it. But you know, at least they got the main event a pay per view or network special, whatever you want to call it. So you know, it's I mean, it's still a possibility that. You know, WrestleMania may have a women's main event. They're talking about it right now. I won't go into details about it because I disagree with the uh, whole idea. But, you know, I think if it was anybody, it should have been Asuka because of the whole streak and title thing. But, you know, we'll get into the reason why it couldn't have been in the main event. But, yeah. Obviously, the raw the two raw championships. I don't agree that should have been in the main event, but 
one of them was, so we won't talk too much about that. We'll get back to the Nakamura and Styles match. Main event or no main event, these guys put on a show and that's what matters the most. It doesn't matter if you're in the main event or not. What matters is your your match is what's talked about. Yeah. So that's what AJ Nakamura did that night. Yeah. Um, I think personally that if somebody wins the Royal Rumble, then they should be in uh, the main event. And if it's and if it's a a case like Oscar, then they can maybe rotate every WrestleMania. Like for example. Uh, whoever wins the male Royal Rumble will be in the main event. One WrestleMania, the female Royal Rumble, the main event. It'll be two main events, so it'll be take place before uh, the WWE or the Universal Championship. And then vice versa. So then you'll have another WrestleMania where you'll have the Raw Women's Championship take place in the main event of WrestleMania. So, you know, could do something like that, maybe. Yeah. It's possible. It is possible. But now that you have, you know, you have two Royal R now you have two Royal Rumbles and four potential champions, or four champions, and you get to choose one of them, and then they put all the titles on the line at WrestleMania. I mean, there's a lot of different changes that have to be made, but I'll I'll talk about that later. Yeah, um, I absolutely love the heel change for Nakamura. Uh, right at the end, and Nakamura did the low blow, and totally surprised everybody. Yep. And yeah, I thought that that was a, a really awesome twist. So what did you think? Uh, it was a pretty good twist to the whole thing. They were, you know, to get Nakamura was given the respect, you know, giving him the belt, and bam, low blow, and starts beating him up at the biggest stage, which was, at first, I'm like. Should have this been saved for SmackDown? Now I'm thinking about it, you know, I think it should have been done. It probably should have been done at WrestleMania, but it was really good. Like, he just beats him up, you know, goes after his, uh, you know. He seems to have an obsession now with AJ's balls for some reason. I don't know what the obsession is. I mean, he kept it on there for a while, so it's an yeah, obsession. It was, it was a long time. Yeah, but... It was good, you know, somebody had to turn heel, and it was just perfect to have uh, Nakamura turn heel than AJ Styles, because AJ Styles has already done it, so Nakamura, he seems to be like this normal baby face anyway, so let's give it a shot. Yeah, and I don't think that, uh, I don't think that most people have seen Nakamura as a heel, I don't so it's know. brand new, you know? So yeah, that, that is brand new, I believe, i I don't know his history in Japan, but... I mean, obviously, if you've followed Nakamura, then I'm sure he's turned heel in the past, but, like, for a North American audience, I don't think... Unless you specifically follow Nakamura, I don't think you've seen him heel. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think that was a great choice to make. And, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see him as a heel because we haven't uh, seen that yet. The next match after the uh, WWE World Title match, it is the match that people may or may not have been waiting for. It's the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now, if you followed the show, Braun Strowman won a battle royal uh, after Fastlane to see who would face the uh, tag team champions. The problem was that Braun Strowman didn't have a tag team partner. So, you know, they're going on and on every week. He's saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a tag team partner. So now we head to WrestleMania, and it's Cesaro and Sheamus defending their Raw Tag Team Championships against Braun Strowman and a mystery partner. So we're so the whole world is probably wondering who the mystery partner was going to be. Some people were saying it was going to be the big show. Some were going to say the Samoa Joe. Some were saying Elias for... Pete Six, they thought Elias and Braun Strowman could team up after beating the crap out of each other. That would have been interesting. So who does who does Braun Strowman pick as his tag team partner? Well, he still hasn't found his tag team partner, so he decided to search the crowd for a tag team partner. And as he's searching around and around for a tag team partner, he happens to stumble upon this 
ten-year-old kid. And he's wearing a WrestleMania shirt and all that. And he picked, and out of the blue, Braun Strowman picks him as a tag team partner, takes him with him by himself, takes the kid by himself to the ring, you know, with, you know, just takes the kid in from the crowd without his parents' permission, just takes him, and they go to, into the ring. And, you know, he asks, you know, Braun Strowman asks, who's the tag team partner? And he said, the kid's name is apparently Nicholas. And so it's official, you know, Cesaro and Sheamus defend their tag team titles against Braun Strowman and Nicholas, the 10-year-old kid. And it ends up Braun Strowman winning the match, and the match ends with Braun Strowman power slamming one of the uh, two individuals. I don't remember who, but he takes down somebody. And they win the match. So Braun Strowman and the 10-year-old kid are now the Raw Tag Team Champions making Nicholas the youngest champion in not only WWE history, but all of pro wrestling at 10 years old. Which is, which is every kid's dream come true. I mean, he gets, to li he gets to live the dream at 10 years old to win a WWE championship. Like, the tag it's the tag team titles, but he got to win it. I so hear now, you're, a, you're a pretty huge Nicholas fan. Oh yeah, you gotta love it, man. Like, you know, you've Come on, man, 10-year-old kid, now is popular, you know, getting the ladies, you know, you could be part of his entourage if you can find him. So, yeah, I mean, it was great, it was, it was a great moment for, it was a great moment, but did it make sense to have a 10-year-old kid win the championship? I don't think it made sense, but it was that, that was just more of a moment than a match, so. And the kid barely did anything. He got the tag in, but then, you know, obviously he's 10 years old. You can't attack, you can't, if the, if the company's so scared to have women get attacked by men, what makes you think a, a dude can attack a kid? So, we all knew he wasn't going to have, he wasn't actually going to fight. So, you know, Braun Strowman just, Braun Strowman just basically wanted to do all the work, and that was it. And have a WrestleMania match. So, it was, you know, it wasn't the best match, in my opinion. I think Nicholas should have uh, kicked Cesaro's ass right there. Yeah. Right the, there in the ring, should have just kicked his ass. Yeah. Yeah, he'd kick him in the balls, stomp on his foot. You know, he could, uh, well, he's down, he does a uh, finger, you know, poke to the eye. Yeah. And then, uh, and then there, yeah, there it is, and then he's won. That's True. How, that's how it rolls. True, but... Did it make sense at the price of Cesaro and Sheamus? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a gimmick, and you know, it's uh, they weren't taking it too seriously. Um, obviously, WWE made some arrangement to have this kid involved in it. You know, maybe uh, maybe they wanted to give the kid a good time or something, and they threw him in there. And oh yeah. You know, and uh, that's pretty much all it was. And obviously, after they gave up the titles on Raw, but you know, um, I think that it would have been nicer if it was a more serious match. And uh, Braun Strowman had, I, you know what? I actually think I would have liked to see, even though it's not legal technically, but I would have liked to see just Braun Strowman versus the Bar. Well, yeah, I think that would have been entertaining to see. I think it would have been a different take on the match. Yeah, but the problem is it's a tag team title. It's the tag team titles. One man can't be a tag team champion, right? Yeah. That's why they call it the tag team championships. You have to have a partner. So who would you have rather have seen Braun Strowman team up with? That's a good question. I, I wanted beer. I, I, I wanted them to go outside the box and um, call up Baron Corbin. It would have just, it would have been cool. Yeah. You know, he needed, he needed something. Braun Strowman needed something. Two, got, two heavyweights beating the crap out of Cesaro and Sheamus. It would have been great. And then after WrestleMania, it would just create that confusion of what, what are they going to do? How can a Raw superstar, SmackDown superstar, how can a SmackDown superstar have a Raw Tag Team Championship, right? Yeah. It would have made sense. It would have been interesting, you know. But, you know, 
they chose to go the route of the ten year old kid. So. Yeah, uh, you know what I uh, I don't hate it as much as you do, but uh, I would have liked to have seen a more se serious match and uh, not so much that gimmick match that they did. Actually, I think it would have been cool maybe even if Big Show came out and they teamed together and maybe even had a running thing with him and Big Show, uh, you know, especially because they fought each other in the past, you know, so. uh, I think it would have been cool to have sort of the, the team of the Giants, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, but they didn't do that, and uh, we got Nicholas instead. Well, he's, he's, you know? a, he's a... He's become the biggest icon in wrestling, man. He's right now 1-0 at WrestleMania. He tag team champions, debut match. I mean, hopefully when he's done, hopefully when he's done with all this school, they get the Braun Strowman and Nicholas get their rematch for the tag titles. Yeah, it's just too bad recess got in the way. Yeah. You know, and math class, math class really, uh, really held Nicholas back from defending his title. Uh, that's true, but now he can... Uh, once he gets his algebra on the way, he can figure out how to get the tag team titles back. Yeah, well, uh, I think later on in life he'll be uh, he'll be pretty pissed that algebra stopped him from uh, from continuing his tag team reign because uh, his tag team reign probably had more significance than algebra. So, uh, so yeah, so that was uh, so the WWE did that. They uh, had a ten year old in a match. So finally, we have the main event. The universal title, the one title that Brock Lesnar has made absolutely useless. And in the main event, we have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. This match uh, was a bit odd. It was alright, at least I thought it was okay. But uh, it was kind of weird. And we had Roman Reigns basically kicking out of 5-5s. Five I think that's a record. I don't think anybody's ever kicked out of 5 finishers. In a match. Nope. Uh, and for me, I mean, you know, we'll get into the negatives in a bit, but it to me it was just, it made this match really weird. And the audience was not digging this match. They were getting quite bored and chanting, this match is awful. Mm -hmm. And uh, just being distracted. I think there was a beach ball in the audience or something. They're, they're cheering for a beach ball. Hell, they even wanted Nicholas to come back out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think people would have been pretty excited if uh, they added Nicholas to this match. Um, I'm sure Nicholas would have kicked both their asses, you know, when he came out. But um, And then he probably would have won the Universal title as well. Yeah. And then have to vacate it the next night because of school. Yeah. But, yeah, that, uh, that fucking algebra, you know. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, this match is weird. Um, I didn't want Brock Lesnar to win this match because Brock Lesnar just doesn't show up. And I know he's part-time. I know it's just a storyline, but Roman Reigns, all part, all part of his story was that Roman Reigns was bashing Brock Lesnar for never showing up and not representing the Universal title, so on and so forth. And all of that is true in real life you know, in my opinion anyway, is that he's not really representing the title. Um, I didn't want to see him win because for, for reasons I just said, that he's never there, he's part-time, Roman Reigns is full-time, and whether you don't like him or like him, he's putting 110% into his work, he shows up, he cares about his job, he cares about the product that he's putting out there, even though some people may argue that he's not the best in the mic or he's not the best in the ring. Um, personally, I think that he's pretty good. Like, I don't think that he's... I think that when he first started, he was a bit rough, but I think now that he's pretty good. Oh, with, with, all, with all superstars who get called out, who get brought in by WWE. I mean, he was a he was a star that was brought in by WWE. He's not the problem is the fans want their uh, you know, act, you know, their indie darling or not indie darlings, but indie stars to be the top stars in the WWE. You know, that's all they want. I mean, that in my sense this match was okay. 
I don't think it was a WrestleMania match. This was a this was more of a big money. This was a more of a big money fight, so it probably would have made more sense at SummerSlam or a Survivor Series. Uh, WrestleMania, I don't think it. I don't think they really put it in as a WrestleMania match, and you know it. You know with Brock Lesnar, I don't. You know he doesn't show up in this that. I, I find that he doesn't really give a shit about what he does. He just. He's just mainly coming in for his money, and that's about it. He makes his money and he goes. You know, and that's all that he cares about. I mean, I know before, you know, before this event, I mean, he was scared, you know, he was scheduled to leave his contract and go to the UFC and, you know, go, you know, work two matches a year over there, you know, because it's UFC. I mean, you know, we make a big deal about WWE working part time, but a lot of UFC fighters only do one or two matches. Hey, CM Punk's going to have a fight. But, you know, the the match was just Brock Lesnar not caring. And then, you know, Roman Reigns, you know, the company is trying to make him the top star, the most popular star, you know. You know, trying to do that whole, you know, hero versus villain thing where Roman's the hero and, you know, everybody he fights is the villain. Like the, you know, the Hulkamania type, you know. Never quite works out with the audience, does it? Um, I disagree with that. It's just like the people who are bit the people who are bitching about Roman Reigns being like that, they're the ones who are little kids who went to go see Hulkamania. So, you know, you're just you know, they're the same people who'll cry for Hulkamania when he shows up at a WrestleMania. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm guilty of that too. I mean when I I mean obviously when I first saw Hogan was in the nineties in WCW, I liked him. I liked him. But, you know, I also like Roman Reigns. I mean, Roman Reigns has really improved. I mean, when he started, he was, you know, starting, you know. I mean, people people were chanting his name back in the day because he was badass, right? Now he's just, oh, he's the, you know, he's the bootleg John Cena, you know. Well, he's not really bootleg John Cena because he's not putting his hand in his face, you know. He's basically going out there being the big dog. You know, so which is totally different from what John Cena does. You know, John Cena went from, you know, John Cena is just this um, guy who, you know, says one thing one day and the next day says something totally different. But with Brock and Roman, the match, it had to happen. I wanted Roman to win because this way at least the Universal title would be regularly on TV. You know, on the other hand, you know, the Universal title has been, ever since it started, the title's been so meaningless. It really, if you won the Universal title, it, could, it doesn't mean shit. I mean, you know, like I said in the first, ep like in episode five, when we were talking about Finn Balor winning the title, never getting the rematch, Owens not getting a rematch, Goldberg not getting a rematch, and if Brock loses, then he's not, he's not, is he going to take a rematch? I don't know. So, you know, if Roman Reigns won and then lost to somebody else, would Roman get his rematch? Probably, because that Roman Roman would end up being the guy, oh, I get a rematch every 20, every 20 matches or whatever, you know? So... Well, he's, uh, he's fighting Brock again at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah. In, uh, in Saudi Arabia... Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, to and it's in a cage match, so Roman Reigns doesn't have to pin Brock Lesnar. He just has to run circles around Brock Lesnar and then climb the cage, and he wins. Well, you know, to a, a fair point, that Brock Lesnar, because he's been sitting on his couch for so long, he gets lazy, and then he, if he's running around Brock, then Brock would just be like. He just wants to sit down anyway, so he'd okay. sit down in the middle of the ring, and then, uh, and then Brock would be too tired to climb out the cage. So, probably, well, he'd probably be too tired to climb the cage anyway. One suplex, and he's already tired out. He's already out of it. He's, he does one suplex, and his whole body turns red. So you know, yeah, it's you know. So uh, Roman Reigns, he kicked out of five at fives. What do you mm -hmm. think about that? 
that that was uh, that that's that's WWE's booking for you. I mean, they had uh, they had so many people lose to one F five on Brock Lesnar. I mean, I know it was Samoa Joe and Lesnar had a match, and you know Joe lost after one F fives. You know, Braun Strowman lost after one of F five. Kane lost after one F five. Roman Reigns five F five. That's just to make Roman Reigns look good, and it's still not working. You know, it's still not working. Well, so. no. One, well, I think uh, you know we talked about this in a previous episode about Roman Reigns and the audience, and is that no matter what he does, you know he can't win over the audience. You know, he uh, uh, there was some uh, joke article about uh, you know even if he saved the basketball kittens, he'd get booed. Uh, the you know people would still hate him. You know, yeah. think it, maybe they he didn't they thought that he didn't save the kittens right or something. You know, or it's like uh, you know why was it Roman Reigns that saved the kittens? Why not Dean Ambrose or something? Yeah, so I mean, I think that Roman Reigns is I don't know I think he's kind of cursed in that way because I don't know if the audience is ever going to embrace him unless he turns heel. Maybe that they will. Yeah, that can't that that. Well, he goes heel, and then you're cheering for him. Yeah. Like, but that's uh, the WWE fans, though. Not even WWE fans. The wrestling fans are like that. Okay, yeah, we purposely we purposely cheer the heels because it's funny. That's true. But half of these people cheer for the heels because of how good they work. But you can't have a whole company of heels. Like, everybody's solution is, oh, go heel, go heel, go heel. But then, where are the baby? Who's going to be babyface? I mean, what are you going to bring Rey Myster at the if they bring Rey Mysterio back, he'd be the only babyface in the company. Is that, you know, where we're headed? Well, you, you need some babyfaces, and Roman Reigns, you know, he if he goes heel, what's that going to do? What's that going to do for the company? Because they they want they want to they want to eventually replace John Cena. You know, eventually, I mean, they, who are they going to replace John Cena with? I mean, John Cena does so much for kids, but he's not a, he's not around. I know who. Who? Nicholas. Nicholas. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got your franchise right there. Well, you got a bigger pop than Roman Reigns. Yeah, but that's just you know, that's just fans purposely uh, supporting kids. That's just uh, that's just the fans supporting a kid. You don't want to, you don't want to boo a kid. I mean, if you are, you're. You're an asshole for booing a kid, right? Yeah, you can uh, you can tell all those assholes out there. I don't know. I don't know if uh, Roman Reigns is gonna get over with the audience. I think that if WWE propped up maybe like Seth Rollins or Finn Balor or somebody like that, you know, as the I guess you could say representing the brand. I think that the audience would be more abrasive to that, but I honestly I think that the audience has just dumped Roman Reigns, and I don't think he's ever going to get over. No, I don't think so. I mean, they could use Finn Balor or Seth Rollins and all those guys, but you know they represent the Indies, right? So you know if they got fired tomorrow, they'd probably go back to the Indies. Where Roman, if he got fired, where would he go, right? So yeah. they're trying to. You know, WWE ultimately is trying to, you know, give the people they created the opportunity versus, you know, guys that come in the front door that, you know, Triple H is like, oh, yeah, he's good. Let's bring him in, you know. And then you get, you're oversaturated with a lot of people who are potentially franchise superstars. Yeah. You know. But, you know, Roman, he's not, he's not going to get anywhere with the audience. He might as well just... You know, if the company wants to keep us, the franchise might as well leave it, and he might as well just do what he does, and that's it, you know. Yeah. If the fans boo him, then he's heel. He's the heel of the company. I think that that's what they should do. I think that Roman Reigns needs to be rebranded. Like, he needs, I think he needs to disappear for a bit and then come back as someone different. And even if it's that heel role, uh, because... Roman Reigns, I think, is now entering the same scenario as Cena, where he's becoming, not only is he becoming boring to, to a lot of people, but there's nothing, like, there's nothing to his character other than being the big dog, you know, I mean, I think that, that we see Roman Reigns in a little more positive light than most people, but 
Um, you know, and I think that he has lots of potential, and I do like Roman Reigns, but I do think that he there needs to be some spicing up happening with his character. I think they need to drop, like, just drop him into some crazy scenario and, you know, have him doing some interesting stuff. You know, that's what I would like to see from Roman Reigns, but uh, where they're going now with the character, I'm not really sure, other than being a punching bag for the audience. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, overall, uh, the match was just okay for me. I actually think that it shouldn't have been the main event. Um, maybe even, uh, well, uh, I had argued AJ Styles versus Nakamura, and I think you said Asuka yeah. and Charlotte, which I think would have been... Uh, I think the I think that's a good choice. I think the Oscar and Charlotte match would have been a great main event. Well, yeah, so I mean, it had more. You know the this this match the women's title match had more hype than the universal title. I mean, the universal title hype was oh Brock's a part timer and I'm a full timer. Same story from well, it hasn't been done. I mean. You know, I think the us this streak and title mat the streak versus title that would have been interesting, but you know, WWE has to put the you know, WWE has to put I I always argue with the co branded pay per views over the fact that no matter what you do, no matter how good one match is from one brand, whatever championship lands on Raw will always be the main event. Which is why now that they're moving the co-branded pay-per-views, how are they gonna how are they gonna even it out? I mean, if they keep Brock as Universal Champion, then this is the opportunity for the WWE title to main event the uh, B-level pay-per-views. But anytime Brock Lesnar comes to defend the title, then that's the main event. So I disagree with that, but this this is what WWE's always done. They did it before when they did uh, co-branded pay-per-views. And they're do they're gonna do it now with co branded pay per views, because when was the last time the WWE title was defended in a co branded pay per view? Ever since they went co branded, SmackDown never got a main event for the title, ever. Mm. So, you know, yeah, that's true. That's why it will never. That's why. That's why it will never happen. That's why when the shake up happened, I was hoping that, you know, AJ Styles would go to Raw and you know. Roman Reigns would go to SmackDown and then win the Universal title and put it over there so that the WWE title would get some attention. But, you yeah. know, it's not going to happen. Because it's about the WWE Universe, so that's why this is the top title. Yeah, well, um, I don't think the Universal title should be at the top. I think it should be the WWE Championship. The Universal title, I just think is kind of a dumb title. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, you can argue the same thing about the World Heavyweight title and the WWE title. Yeah. How the world, when the World title was on Raw, it was the top priority build. And then when it went to SmackDown, it was just, yeah, anyone can win this build. Yeah, I just think that uh, there should be one championship. The oh, WWE agree. championship, and if they have to go back and forth with it, fine if they want to have interpromotional matches i think that's fine too but i think there should be one championship the universal title i think just muddies the water i think it devalues the wwe championship and it's already becoming devalued now because of the universal title and not only that but just because brock lesnar is never around and defending it it's become a worthless title in my opinion and it's just uh, you know, and AJ Styles has done such a great job with the title. And any honestly, anybody on SmackDown who's had the WWE Championship, I feel, has really represented that belt. Even Ginger Mahal as well. So overall, uh, I thought it was a pretty decent show. I thought that uh, that WrestleMania. I mean, it went uh, for how long? Was it like oh, five hours? Five hours or five something? Hours. Is that the longest WrestleMania? Um, yeah, that five hours is usually the uh, maximum of that. I mean, they've done five hours before.
back, uh, I believe WrestleMania 20 was five hours. That was the first time they did it for five hours. Yeah. Now they're just going to be constantly making it five hours. Yeah. Which uh, is probably a bit of overkill, but at the same time, it gives you a lot of time to do a lot of stuff. I personally liked the stage. I thought uh, it was a pretty cool stage. I didn't agree with the main event. The stage itself, I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was good, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. It just, you know, the WrestleMania logo was handwritten, while on the other side they had their original WrestleMania logo. So the continuity was kind of, kind of off. If they had, uh, you know, kept the continuity the right way, then it would have made sense. But And then you had, like, the mask as the stage, and then that's a little Titan Tron, which I found weird as well. Like, you could have, you know, they could have played around with it and have their eyes in there or something. Well, that may have looked even more creepier, so it's kind of, it was kind of weird in that sense. In regards to the pay-per-view itself, I thought it was uh, a really good pay-per-view. I mean, it's WrestleMania. It's always going to be something epic. It's not, you know, it's not mainly about the wrestling it's just more about the entertainment so that's why it was great obviously i wish uh you know obviously there was a lot of wrestling involved which was okay for me i mean wrestling wrestling makes it more entertaining than having these you know entertaining spoofs you know you know it's a good thing they didn't have like major celebrities having matches and stuff like that so i thought it was i thought this year's was good and, you know, like, do I agree? I mean, the matches did flow. I mean, obviously, you wanted matches in certain spots, but, you know, at least some, at least somehow the pay-per-view flowed really well, you know. Obviously, they did, you know, the Oscar-Charlotte match early, so people are talking about that instead of being distracted about the Bliss and Nia Jax because, obviously, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, you know, issues with the fans not liking that match, you know, it reminded them of the Divas division, and I don't think they wanted that to go early and then ruin the Charlotte Oscar match. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I would say that uh, the Nia Jax and the main event were probably, probably one of the worst parts of the show. I would say, yeah. I mean, not by much, but Obviously, the Universal title was probably the worst out of the two. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, you know, the women matches were all right, but, you know, the the whole story, the whole storyline was just, it was just off-putting on both the Universal and Raw Women's Championship. So what do you think, uh, do you think WrestleMania is holding up after all these years? Yeah, it's holding up. It's holding up. It's WrestleMania. It's not... It, you know, it's always going to be the pay-per-view that excites everybody, yeah. regardless. And, you know, people will say, all oh, the build-ups are terrible and this and that, which is true. But, you know, in my opinion, the build-ups don't matter anymore because they know WrestleMania is going to be the big show. It's, you know, it's not just about the matches. It's about the fans. You know, you, they're getting fans from around the world, you know, even with, you know, the, they, it's a whole weekend event, you know, you got the TakeOver, you got the WrestleMania, you got the Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania. Yeah. So, and you're getting, you know, the whole world, it, it gets the whole world together pretty much in one night. Unfortunately, it's always in the U.S., but I think they're, it's always going to be in the U.S. now. But still, it's, it's that thing that will never, it'll never die out because it's the biggest thing, you know. When it comes to WrestleMania, everybody wants to. Everybody wants to watch it. Everybody, they pretty much throw their money at you know the tickets. Or if you can't be there live, you're going to a bar, going to a theater, you know, party, party, whatever. And they get the they get the tickets before you even know the card. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's so, true. You know, and with WrestleMania, it won't matter who's on it. I mean. You know, you could read the rumors, oh, this match is going to happen, that match is going to happen, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen, and it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter with WrestleMania, because you know you're going in, you're going to be see, you're going to see something epic, you know, you know, they do concert, they do little concerts, they do lots of things to provide everybody with the entertainment they want, so, yeah. 
I don't think WrestleMania is gonna. I don't think WrestleMania is gonna have any issues. It's it's WrestleMania. You know, if you know, if you if this was like you know Survivor Series, you know, that's a different story. But WrestleMania, it'll always uh, it'll always be ep epic, whether the matches are good, bad, or ugly, or you know, the you know five stars, you know, matches. It'll always WrestleMania will always hold up. What would uh, what would you say? The second best pay per view would be to Royal Rumble, or sorry, to uh, WrestleMania. I would say Royal Rumble would be uh, the second favorite. I would go. I want to. I would. I would go with SummerSlam. SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see why the Royal Rumble would be the second best to most because in the Rumble match itself, you never know what's going to happen. Something's going to happen, exciting. But I think SummerSlam would be the best, the second best. True. All right, well, uh, I thought that, first of all, I think that the WrestleManias are definitely holding up. Um, I do think that uh, there are some WrestleManias that are better than this one, you know, and I think that it goes up and down, you know, some are really good, some are not the best, but I think they're doing a pretty good job with WrestleMania, and... Sorry. I will say that even the programming now is doing good. And for me, in the past, uh, I just, their shows weren't doing it for me. Uh, and I thought that a lot of their programming was really bad. I think SmackDown is doing pretty well. And Raw, I'm, I'm liking now. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, WrestleMania, I think, has been, I think they're doing a really good job with it. And hopefully it uh, just keeps getting better. Uh, what would you say overall? Uh, what would what what score out of ten would you give WrestleMania thirty four? I'll give it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah, only because of some of the things that happened that weren't really needed to be done, but were done. Yeah. So I'll give it an eight out of ten. Yeah. Um. I actually will give about the same eight out of ten. I think it was a pretty decent, solid show. Uh, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but. On the other end of that, you know, WWE seems to, you know, hit or miss sometimes, and sometimes their misses are just little head scratchers. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't affect them. No, they've already made their money. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. and uh, you know, they always believe in their decisions, <laughs> not yours. Yeah. Well, WWE always thinks they're right. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that was our WrestleMania 34 review. I uh, hope you liked it. If you have any comments or you disagree with us in any way, please post in the comments below. Uh, you can get a hold of Nitten at... Uh, it's Patel1987. On Twitter. Yeah. I'm only on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. I don't, I don't like Facebook, so I'm not on Facebook. Tweet Nitten. Let him know what you thought. Uh, you can get a hold of me at uh, the Andrew K channel. On Twitter, uh, you can also get a hold of me on Facebook, and you can also email me as well. And all those contacts will be in the description box below. But let us know what you thought of WrestleMania 34. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What were your highlights? What were the matches and the moments that uh, you didn't like so much? You know, if you want to call us a little uh, punk ass, little you know what, then uh, go ahead. We'll uh, we'll give you a rebuttal if we can come up with one. All right, guys, uh, make sure that you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for some more videos. Keep it locked on the Andrew K channel. Gonna have a great first, if you don't mind. Yeah. It's, it's not a Danish, but <laughs> it's, it's not messy like a Dane. I, I'm actually surprised it was that messy. You want me to get the vacuum over? And I will say that right off the bat, <laughs> <laughs> that's going on the that's going on the bloopers. That's going on the bloopers. To be B Man! You've gotta beat B Man! Woo! AJ Stop! You will rest in peace. I was just so far from here. Focused on my own way.